Hello everyone and welcome to the build of my first module. The choice of an LFO as the first module may seem a bit odd. Well, I decided to make my first design with something easy that doesn't involve too much complex stuff. So an LFO is a good place to start, I think. My plan is to build a voltage controlled LFO with a couple of different wave shapes and a sync input. So this is what the design looks like. In the middle we have the oscillator core, which outputs a triangle and square wave. And uh, this is a pretty standard uh, configuration or, or design taken from the LM324 datasheet from the beginning, I think. And I have improved it a little bit by adding a switch fit here instead. Um, and uh, also added a switch so I can change between high and low frequency setting. And uh, here we have the CV input mixer, which basically takes the control voltage in and th there's an amount put here. And there are also potentiometer to uh, set the, the offset or, or the frequency, so you can dial in that uh, manually. There is an LFO reset or sync input here, so you can reset the LFO. Uh, this circuit, however, is not working properly, so uh, I will have to come back to that and, uh, and redesign that. There's a LED driver here, so you can s watch the uh, positive and negative uh, waveforms. And here we have the Eurorack uh, power connector with uh, some uh, capacitance for uh, decoupling capacitors for the op-amps. And here we have the sine wave shaper that is basically this is taken from uh, a post i found on the eve blog uh, forum and uh, i can post a, put a link in the description if you're interested to more about this and i uh, adjusted the output level a little bit so it matches the 10 volt uh, peak to peak uh, requirement of the of your rack and here we have the ramp wave shaper. Uh, this is a little bit simplified, uh, the, the circuit. Um, and it has the trade-off or, or um, issue that it gives a ramp output that has twice the uh, frequency of the, of the oscillator core. But, uh, it's much uh, simpler and yeah, I have removed the trim pots fr from uh, from the original design and made it a little bit easier and uh, it didn't require so many op-amps so I was able to fit everything into two TL074s uh, so that was also sort of consideration for this. Okay, so then, and then we have an inverting output of that as well and uh, some buffer, output buffer. So, after the design was completed and tested on breadboard, it was time to figure out the form factor and the number of HP that was needed. I managed to fit everything in on 6 HP and I had to struggle quite a bit to route everything the way I wanted it. But the Gerber files were sent for manufacturing and I received the PCBs a couple of weeks later. The design of the front panel was the next step and since I have a 3D printer I decided to try to see if I could get an acceptable result using that. I tried to use SMT components as far as I'm able to in my builds. The availability and pricing of the components is, is better than uh, through hole mount in general. But uh, SMT can be a bit challenging unless you have the right tools. But nowadays, the tools are not that expensive anymore, and you don't need top quality production grade equipment to get the job done. In the next episode, I will complete the assembly of this module and test it. I will also have a go at painting the markings on the front panel using scale model paints and an airbrush. So uh, yeah, let's see how that uh, turns out. So thank you for watching, and I see you soon. Goodbye.